There is a country in Central America which has almost reached the perfection in nature protection. Costa Rica. The national motto of people in Costa Rica is Pura Vida. It means pure life. And these two words represent a generally positive attitude to life and nature. Pura Vida is a greeting and farewell. Pura Vida is deeply incorporated in the lives of local people. Pura Vida is everywhere in Costa Rica. Pura Vida! It is estimated that about 5% of all living organisms live here. In 2018, almost one third of Costa Rica's area was covered by national parks, state reserves, and private reserves. There were 28 national parks, which is fascinating because Costa Rica covers only two thirds of the area of the Czech Republic. We traveled to this natural Eden with the aim to film the amazing diversity of ecosystems and their animal inhabitants. There are not many countries with such a positive attitude to the nature protection as Costa Rica. The army is not existing here since 1949 and the legislation is full of nature-friendly rules. Moreover, the economics of Costa Rica is the strongest in the region and some people call it a Switzerland of Central America. Despite being a very small country, Costa Rica has a vast area of beautiful coasts. The Caribbean coast is only 212 kilometers long, but the Pacific coast reaches the length of 1,016 kilometers. The place where the land and the sea meet are full of interesting opportunities for some animals. For example, the migrating waders use the beaches for feeding and resting before their long journey. We are now on the Ostianol beach on the Pacific coast. This place is famous as one of the most important nesting grounds of sea turtles in the world. From August to December, it is possible to observe here the Aribada once or twice a month. During Aribada, hundreds or thousands of olive ridley sea turtles come out of the sea and lay their eggs in the sand. This individual is one of the last sea turtles from the latest Aribada and we are lucky to see it on the beach during the day. The turtles usually come out after the darkness for safety reasons. Females use all their energy to dig a hole and lay from 80 to 100 eggs inside it. She is surprisingly skillful when it comes to camouflaging of the nest. When she is finished, she returns back to the ocean. From now she will be swimming in the water for a year or two, and then she will return back to this place. Her own life has also started here.
the coastal forests and mangroves grow a little bit more far away from the beach. This habitat can be inhabited only by animals which tolerate the changes in water salinity. We can often meet here the dragons of Costa Rica, the plumed basilisks and green iguanas. These big lizards are always staying close to the water and they are ready to jump in it in case of an emergency. A raccoon can be a possible threat for them. Raccoons are very adaptable omnivores. If they don't succeed catching prey, they are happy to eat, for example, fruit leftovers from tourists. These small carnivores are very social and spend a lot of time with playing and resting with other individuals of their kind. They belong to the most common mammals in Costa Rica. In the northwestern part of Costa Rica, the climate is drier and suitable for tropical dry forests. The vegetation is adapted to the heats and many species have dangerous thorns. We can find here animals which don't live anywhere else in Costa Rica. Santa Rosa National Park is a remote area of the wilderness and animals are very abundant here. Thus, there is no shortage of rare sightings. The canopy is not very dense here, so we have a chance to see the monkeys. These spider monkeys live their whole lives in the trees and they move like acrobats, using their tail as a fifth limb. Apart from mammals, this park is a heaven for reptiles. Many snakes live in the dry forest and some of them are active only during the rainy season. The most common venomous snake in Costa Rica are the pit vipers. They are usually perfectly camouflaged and wait in ambush for their prey.
Coral snakes from the elapid family have a very different behavior. Their bright colors should act like a warning for other animals. Even though they are rarely much longer than one meter, every predator will avoid attacking them because of their strong, potent venom. The most famous ecosystem of Costa Rica is the tropical lowland rainforest. They are covering a big area on the Caribbean and also the Pacific part of the country. Thousands of species of organisms live here and some of them are confined to some level of the canopy. Many famous vertebrates can be found in the treetops of the forest giants. The big scarlet macaws have almost disappeared from the nature of Costa Rica in the past. The reasons were the habitat destruction and export for pet trade. Today we can see these giants among parrots only in a few places, but thanks to the effective protection, they are returning back and spreading again. They use their powerful beak to open the toughest nuts, and they are important seed dispersers. The parrots share the canopy with four species of monkeys. The biggest monkey of Costa Rica is the mantled howler monkey. Howler monkeys are famous for their strong, distinctive call, which they use for the protection of their territory. It can be heard from a distance of a few kilometers. Their diet consists mainly of leaves, which they digest in their big stomach. Capuchin monkeys are not so picky. They will even eat meat. They are very social, and it is common that they share the care of their offspring. The young capuchin monkey grows in a loving society and has attention from every adult individual. Until the age of three months, it stays close to adults, but then it starts to explore the forest on its own. Tight contact and grooming are ways how to make the bonds between the monkeys of the group stronger. The second activity also helps these animals to get rid of parasites. The rarest monkey species in Costa Rica is the common squirrel monkey. These tiny clever monkeys are eating almost everything what they find in the branches. Today, we can only find them in a few localities. The life of another mammal from the canopy flows in a very different tempo than the life of the monkeys. 
the speed of this animal is very, very slow. It is so slow that even the green algae grow on its fur. The sloth spends most of its day by sleeping and digesting the vegetation, which is not very rich in nutrients. It is adapted to the life with one purpose. Save energy as much as possible. The sloth defecates only once a week and it is probably the only reason why it goes down from the tree to the ground. Many birds like to sit on the top of the solitary giant trees. Toucans are one of the most famous birds thanks to their colourful feathers and huge beaks. They are related to woodpeckers. There are about 600 resident bird species living in Costa Rica and many of them are important pollinators and seed dispersers. This toucan uses its big but light beak to pick up the fruits. Maybe it will eat the fruit with the seeds and they will go through its guts without being damaged. The bird will leave them on some other place in the forest when defecating. But maybe it will eat just a part of the fruit and the leftovers will fall to the ground many meters below. Another animal will find it there, such as the agouti. This rodent is an important seed disperser of the forest trees. These coatis are also trying to find some food on the forest floor. They often move in a big family group and will eat various types of food from the fruits to small vertebrates. It is quite easy to observe them in the forest because these members of the raccoon family are not very shy animals and they are common in Costa Rica. We have seen just a few representatives of the whole biodiversity of the tropical rainforest. Hundreds of different vertebrate species and thousands of invertebrates live here. Some insects, such as the leafcutter ants, play an important role in the ecosystem. Despite being very tiny, they are farmers growing fungi, which they cultivate on a medium of the leaf tissue. To do that, they need to gather a high amount of the plant material. The Nature Protection Works in Costa Rica 
thanks to the existence of both areas protected by the country and private reserves. We visited some places from the second category to learn more about the practical aspects of the conservation. The local guide Esteban is speaking about the biological reserve called Tirimbina, where he works. That Tirimbina is located in La Virgen de Sarapiqui, which uh, it's belonged to a province called Heredia. I mean, we're just about like one hour and 40 minutes away from San Jose, the capital, capital city of Costa Rica. Um, the place, in, well, Tirimbina, it's a biological reserve. I mean, besides being a hotel, I mean, it was previously just a reserve. So they turned it into a hotel um, due to the request of so many people that visited here so because they wanted to stay into a biological station. And uh, here they actually developed several tours as a good way to get the funds to keep protecting the tropical rainforest and also to keep doing research and to do environmental education. Mm -hmm. The government is not actually like investing their money to protect the area. So that, that in that case, Tirimbina has to do its own kind of uh, things in order to, I'll say, get the money to mm -hmm. protect it. So they receive donations. They also practice, the, um, I'll say, ecotourism which is really important to hear because ecotourism so it's like basically allowing people to do and run tours inside of the forest they are only using the 10 percent of the property for this part and um so they can get the money to keep protecting the forest do the research and practicing environmental education mm -hmm. on the part that is environmental education is really really interesting because we allow kids from several uh, schools around this area so to come into La Tirumbina to do kind of like um, research which is part of their class so instead of having like you know class in to the close classrooms so they're coming in here in order to receive like an open classroom in the forest mm -hmm. okay so one of the uh, major projects of La Tirumbina especially research part is with butterflies Lepidoptera so we try to we try to see how many different species of butterflies are found into their reserve and for that reason they have been working with this for over 10 years so they wanted to know how abundant the Lepidoptera is in the Latirindina. so far they got uh, to identify over 1,300 different species of butterflies another good example of the nature conservation in the private land is located in the same valley just behind a corner my name is Dave Lando my son and I are the owners of Dave and Dave Nature Park in Santa Piqui, Costa Rica. It's in the Northeast Rainforest. Um, we've had it for 30 years. When we uh, purchased it, it was a palm plantation. There were a thousand hectares of palm uh, in this area for 30 years. Um, it went bankrupt and then the bank was selling small pieces so we purchased six hectares and we've changed the uh, palm plantation into habitat. Uh, we took all of the palms down and then we um, reintroduced the same trees, the native trees, to this area. Over the years, it's, it's become more, more, uh, more plants. They keep bringing them in. And uh, we're now from almost zero species of, of birds in the plantation. We now have over 230 species of birds uh, and increasing and increasing. And that's, uh, that's what we've been doing. Um, we had an opportunity to help the environment, uh, and that's, that's what we're doing. And my son came down and he's actually uh, designed this for tourism. It was a family project for like, well, for, for the first 24, well, first 24 years. Now we're at ecotourism venue, generating revenues to support our project. Um, in our hummingbird area, we have uh, usually five or six uh, species coming in. Once the forest was back, the flowers were back, uh, my son Dave designed an area where uh, you can see them up close and they're in their habitat. So it's actually a view off of the balcony. It's above the river. And um, we'll have uh, five or six different species coming in. Uh, the the white-necked Jacobin breathes here. So we have a lot of those. Um, we probably went from zero hummingbirds 
colby breeds to throughout the year probably 15 species coming through they migrate to different elevations they don't leave the country but they're different insects different flowers and back down again so at any one time we'll have five or six uh, species they're thriving uh, we, uh, throughout the property we planted uh, flowers for them and um, it's good it's just a matter of make a decision to make it possible for them to regenerate the population it's really that simple it's really that simple and very enjoyable and very rewarding the hummingbirds have extremely fast metabolism so they must search for nectar almost constantly they thrive on places like this where they have enough food and then they become more habituated to people Some original inhabitants of Costa Rica still live in the traditional way, and they realize that it is important to protect the natural resources. The forest plays a vital role in their lives. My name is Sebastián. I live in the territory of the Kekolbi. It's a territory composed by indigenous bribris and carecares. Eh, que es las dos etnias que tenemos en el Caribe costarricense y eh, principalmente eh, muchos trabajan sus fincas de, para subsistencia pero también eh, otras personas indígenas hacen trabajo de guía o trabajan para eh, gente que tiene cabinas, hoteles empezamos Trabajando en la parte, digamos, de conservación, hace ya eh, 16, 17 años ya en desarrollo. Eh, ha sido todo un proceso realmente, porque nosotros los indígenas hemos mantenido siempre el bosque. Para nosotros es algo muy importante, ya que encierra cuatro cosas importantes para la supervivencia de los pueblos indígenas como es el agua, la medicina, los materiales para construir ranchos y eh, suelos fértiles para poder producir. Entonces, son las cuatro cosas que dependen de eh, los pueblos indígenas y es parte de nuestra cultura, de nuestra forma de convivir con la naturaleza. Pero también en los últimos años han incrementado mucho digamos, la visitación para observación de aves, por ejemplo, Entonces luego construimos este centro de investigación y ya de aquí se hizo como una plataforma para desarrollar otras investigaciones. Entonces, eh, paralelo fui desarrollando investigación entonces con aves, con anfibios, con reptiles. Eh, en los últimos años he ido desarrollando más que todo investigación con serpientes porque eh, es como conocer, aprender un poco más. Eh, agricultores, campesinos, en realidad, en general, todos eh, tienen algún temor, un grado de algún temor sobre las serpientes y muchos crean pánico, desde niño le empiezan a, a decir los chiquitos, mire, son todos, las serpientes son malas, hay que matarlas, entonces... Eh, La idea siempre es la educación para que realmente entiendan que no todo es malo. Entonces, por ejemplo, eh, tenemos esta colección que tengo acá. Ha sido, eh, todo han sido asesinados en, en las fincas. Entonces, he ido colectándolo para que las otras personas entiendan cuáles son los, las especies, cómo reconocer si realmente son venenosas, no son venenosas. Entonces es parte de eso. Entonces, he ido colectando estas para como muestra de que han sido especies importantes para la ecología, pero también eh, nosotros los seres humanos todos lo estamos eliminando. Esta es eh, una, una matahuey, nombre común. Eh, fue, eh, lo encontramos eh, que lo asesinaron, entonces obtuvimos la cabeza para tenerlo para la parte de educación ambiental. Y así sucesivamente fue colectado esta otra, que es una terciopelo. Ferdilans, or terciopelo, in Spanish, is probably the most feared snake in Central America. It can be more than two meters long. It is very common, 
and often comes close to the human settlements. This snake has a reputation of an aggressive animal. But it is obvious here that when handled calmly, even the encounter with Ferdinand's can be a nice one. We can even see its long fangs. Ferdinand's has an important role in the ecosystem as a predator of rodents and prevents their populations from growing too large and destroying the crops. Another famous venomous snake from Costa Rica is the eyelash pit viper. It lives on the trees and has incredible color variability. The most striking is the yellow color morph. These snakes sometimes sit on the heliconias and other flowers and wait for birds which will come to drink the nectar. The pit vipers are the most abundant group of venomous snakes in Central America and in Costa Rica they live in almost every ecosystem. There are more than 130 snake species living in Costa Rica and most of them are not venomous. The biggest snake diversity is in the tropical rainforests. Some non-venomous species are mimics of the venomous coral snakes and they try to avoid the predation in this way. Boas are the biggest snakes of Costa Rica. Boa constrictor can grow up to more than three meters. The forest is full of various species of amphibians. The tiny poison frogs are famous for their poison which they have thanks to their food consisting mainly of ants. They are active during the day, so their warning coloration is well visible. The savage's thin-toed frog is big, but there is an even bigger frog living in Costa Rica, the cane toad. For many people, the most beautiful frogs of the country are the tree frogs. These elegant beauties move efficiently in the canopy thanks to their adhesive discs on their fingers. The red-eyed tree frog is the most photographed frog species in the world. Apart from frogs, there are also interesting salamanders in the rainforest. The tropical climbing salamanders don't have lungs and breathe just with their skin. They don't live only on the ground, but can climb to the canopy and even jump from one leaf to another.
In the higher altitude, the tropical rainforests are replaced by the mountain cloud forests. The weather is dramatically different in 3,000 meters above sea level. The cold and humidity is not a problem for the birds. Many bird species are well adapted to the harsh conditions and they live only here. We can find here a variety of groups from trogons and woodpeckers to hummingbirds and tanagers. The emerald toucanet is interested in the wild avocado. But it is not the main consumer of this fruit. During the right season, the resplendent quetzal feeds almost exclusively on the wild avocado. The quetzal belongs to the most beautiful birds on the planet. And in the past, the Maya rulers used the feathers of the species to decorate their headdresses. This is the biggest member of the Trogon family. Only the males have the elongated tail feathers, but many of them are not able to keep this beautiful trait in a good condition. It is possible to observe the Quetzals mostly in the morning and late afternoon when they feed on the fruits. For the rest of the days, they are hidden deep in the forest. There is another ecosystem above the cloud forests. Only the toughest animals can survive on the top of the mountains. There are still active volcanoes in Costa Rica. It was near the summit of one of them, Irazu, where we first observed the negative influence of the massive tourism to the animal behavior. Some species have lost their fear of humans. They eat garbage and can even be aggressive. In this case, it is the curious coati. Before the tourists were feeding the coatis and other animals, but today it is prohibited in the whole country. There are even safely locked garbage bins on most of the problematic places. The problem of the massive tourism is highly visible in the most famous places, like Manuel Antonio National Park. This place doesn't look like a pure wilderness anymore. It is rather a fun park where the main attraction are animals. The capuchin monkeys adapted well to the crowds and it is almost possible to touch them.
The raccoons are clever and steal food from people while they are swimming in the sea. Another big attraction are the crocodiles of the river Tarcoles. Around the bridge, above the river, there are many shops and restaurants, and the bridge itself is usually full of people. Not everybody is respecting the rules, so the crocodiles are being fed from time to time. It is very important to know that the ecotourism must be organized in a respectful way to nature. Too many people can easily break the fragile balance of the ecosystem. We are back at the beach in Ostianol at the Pacific coast. The last tired sea turtle returns to the ocean. But she doesn't have an easy time here because of the American black vultures gathered around and they are trying to tear flesh from her body at the exposed parts. This is a very natural situation, which happens often, and the turtle finally goes into the water without being severely injured. But sadly, her eggs are not safe. There are stray dogs moving on the beach, and they will look for the turtle's nests. They dig into the sand and eat every egg they find. The vultures are able to join the feast thanks to them. Despite the situation, the Ostianol beach belongs to the most secure nesting grounds of sea turtles in the world. During the first three days of Aribada, people collect the eggs from the nests and they take them somewhere else because the later arriving turtles will destroy them. The amount of clutches is so huge that some are simply left for stray dogs or pigs. The story of this nest didn't end well but in general, this place is a haven for sea turtles, and every year thousands of fresh hatchlings go to the ocean from this beach. Costa Rica is an Eden for both animals and nature lovers. In this documentary, you saw just a fraction of the full diversity of ecosystems in this country. The rainforest is full of life also after darkness, and many organisms are just living hidden from our eyes. A visit to Costa Rica is a must for anybody who sincerely loves nature and every living thing. It is not surprising that most of the visitors return regularly to this country. There is no other way how to say goodbye to Costa Rica, just Pura Vida!